The following video will provide instructions for calibrating the feed length on an HENM horizontal air saw with the dash C control. This would include the H90A-C, H105A-C, Sidewinder A-C, and the Cyclone A-C saw models. Follow all safety precautions and warnings to minimize the chance of injury. Once the saw and the bar feed are level from front to back and side to side, the part length calibration can be performed. This procedure should be performed whenever a saw is first installed, moved, or the part lengths are not within an acceptable tolerance range. Typically, if the feed rate and cutting pressure are properly set for the blade and material, the material is correct for the saw, the blade is correct for the saw model, and a high quality cutting lubricant is used, the saw should repeat within plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. To calibrate the part length, first some test parts will need to be cut and measured. Press the shuttle forward button. This brings the bar feed shuttle off of the shuttle stop. The calibration process for the dash C control is really quite easy. Test cutting can be done with any material suitable for the saw and blade, but selecting a relatively small solid material that is easily measured with a caliper is the most convenient. Solid, low carbon round material 2 inches to 3 inches in diameter makes good test cut material depending on the blade being used. With the cutting pressure and feed rate properly set, place the material flat on the saw bed and position just slightly past the blade in order to begin the automatic cutting sequence with a trim cut. Program a job to cut three short parts like five hundred thousandths or seven hundred and fifty thousandths of an inch. If you are uncertain how to program a job, refer to the operations manual. Select a job number and program the three parts, verifying that there is not a job programmed in the next sequential job number. Press the Auto On button and verify that all of the components on the control are in the Auto mode. Press the Start with Cut button and the Start button at the upper right of the control at the same time. The saw vise will clamp, the motor and blade will start, and the arm will come down and make the trim cut. After the trim cut is complete, the feed vise will clamp as the arm begins to raise, the saw vise will open, and the shuttle or bar feed will move forward, moving the first program part in to be cut. When the feed forward switch is made, the saw vise will clamp, the arm will begin to move downward, and the shuttle will return for the next part. When the first cut is complete, the cycle will repeat until all three parts are cut. Then the arm will rise and the motor and blade will stop. Measure the length of each part using precision calipers. The part lengths should be within plus or minus five thousandths of an inch of each other. However, if the part lengths are not within plus or minus five thousandths of the desired length, that is, the length entered into the cutting program, an easy calibration to the part length can be made. Toggle the Run Program button to the Program mode. Press the Function button and the LED screen will clear, leaving a blank screen. Now press the Minus button. This puts the control into the Calibration mode. Simply enter the actual part length cut and measured on the three test cut parts. For example, if the part length entered into the program was five hundred thousandths of an inch and the actual average part length of the three parts cut is five hundred and twenty thousandths of an inch, enter the five hundred and twenty into the control and press the enter button. This calibrates the control to what the saw is actually cutting. The digital readout or DRO located at the rear of the saw on the side of the bar feed will need to be changed to read the part length actually cut as well.
The process will differ depending on which version of the DRO exists on the saw, but the concept is the same. If the saw was made prior to mid-year 2005 and has an older style digital readout, one that is encased in a gray sheet metal box, the four screws holding the sheet metal cover will need to be loosened. Lift the cover off of the DRO and set it aside. Beneath the base that the digital readout is mounted on, there are four screws. Remove three of the screws and leave, but loosen, the fourth screw that is holding the top right of the DRO when viewed from above. Swing the DRO out to disengage the gears and turn the gear that changes the number readout to the length closest to the actual test part lengths cut so the DRO is being changed to read what the saw is actually cutting. If the saw was manufactured after mid-year 2005, it likely has the newer style DRO and is even easier to calibrate. The initial parts of the process are the same, all the way up through the test cuts, but changing the DRO readout is easier. This orange-colored DRO has a black collar on a shaft that turns and changes the numerical readout. There is a small set screw that holds this collar onto the shaft. Loosen the set screw with an Allen wrench, and using the wrench as a handle, turn the readout past and then back down to the actual part length measured on the three cuts, and tighten the set screw. With either style DRO, it is advisable to recheck the part length by cutting a few more short parts in automatic mode to verify that the part length is within plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. This completes the part length calibration process for the HENM saw horizontal band saws with a dash C control. However, other factors can alter the part length, such as blade thickness or kerf. To adjust this parameter for thicker or thinner blades, refer to the operations manual.